Hi Flosscube, it's Lorna Lady Bird Stitcher. Today is Wednesday the 9th of May. I'm back from the US. We had a lovely time but um, I did get a bit sick while I was there and I've just been recovering from a cold. Um, still coughing a little bit so that's why I didn't. I wasn't back last week. Um, I'll try to keep the coughing to a minimum but you know you can only <laughs> control it so far. Um, but I'll try and edit any coughing out so if you see any weird strange breaks that's what that's probably where I'll be. Um, so the trip was wonderful. Thank you to everyone who wished us well. Um, it went really well. We did have a little bit of bad weather, which kind of made my cold worse. Um, we didn't want to miss out on the sightseeing because we were mainly there to sightsee. And um, a lot of the time it was pouring rain. And because of that, um, you know, you don't want to miss out on sightseeing, but then again, you, you don't really want to get sick either. But um, we were kind of huddled up and with hoods on and umbrellas and things, but you still get soaking wet and um, that kind of contributed. I actually got sick on the plane and um, I just felt, felt myself getting sick on the plane. And as soon as I got off, I was fully sick. And then, um, yeah, it kind of hung around for a couple of weeks because it was we just had poor weather for a couple of weeks so and yeah the cough always lasts a long time for me unfortunately so just getting over that but anyway um we landed in LA um so we left Australia at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning and arrived in LA at six o'clock on Tuesday morning so that was awesome <laughs> um you know you, you um fly 12 hours and arrive earlier than when you left which is great <laughs> um but luckily my husband got some sleep on the plane because he was our driver and we hired a car as soon as we got to LA and drove to Las Vegas. Um, we saw a show there. Um, it was the only child-friendly show we could find and it was Nathan Burton. I believe he's fairly famous in the US. Um, I'd never heard of him before, but he was fantastic. Um, it was a magic show and it was, it was really, really good. And... Um, my husband enjoyed it too and Heidi my daughter loved it so yeah that was that was a lot of fun we then went to Stitches Paradise um, where I bought a couple of things um, it was some chronic and a chart so I'll show you the chart the chronic's already been kitted up with where I the with the charts that I bought it for um, we then drove to Arizona my husband used to live in Arizona um, he actually did a piloting course there. Um, that was his, he's actually lived in the States three times and that was his third third time living in the States. He lived in Arizona where he was studying to be a pilot. Um, that didn't eventuate for him, but um, he still has a very big interest in planes and things. But he enjoyed traveling around um, Arizona and Phoenix and you know seeing the, how, ma how much it's grown since he left about 20 odd years ago. Um, we then went, we then drove back to LA and caught a cruise to, um, Vancouver. So the cruise stopped us in Santa Barbara where it was absolutely pouring. So we went to the aquarium there cause it was just a nice, it was close enough to the port where we could walk there and um indoors so we went to the aquarium there so that was really good um we walked back to the to the ship dripping wet <laughs> it was cold and, and wet and um we missed astoria we were supposed to stop in astoria in oregon but um the seas were too rough and um yeah we, we could really feel the the ship rocking a lot a lot of people got uh, motion sickness unfortunately whereas before that it had been smooth sailing so that was unfortunate um so we missed Astoria but then it took us to um, Vancouver Island where I went to a stitching shop there as well and I will put the I can't remember what it was called but I will put the um name on the screen somewhere um I didn't buy anything from there because I just I thought that um a lot of the stuff they had I could get from home and their prices were exactly the same as, as what we we pay. Um, the Canadian dollar is virtually parity with Australian with the Australian dollar. So 
um, yeah, a lot of the prices were the same, and I thought just carrying stuff over, it's not, there's not much point, I could just buy stuff from, from Australia. So I tended to stick to things that I could only get from overseas, um, and um, probably at a good prices. Um, then we went to Vancouver, we stayed there for, for four days, I have a friend up there, she's actually a friend of my really close friend, um, and we met with her, her husband and, and their three kids and went to their house and had dinner with them and that was really nice. Vancouver, we also had a lot of rain. So again, we, we took lots of day trips. We had a car, we hired a car when we got up there. Um, took lots of day trips to, um, to different places. Vancouver's amazing. Um, it's a beautiful place, but again, a lot of it we saw in the rain. <laughs> Um, the day we were supposed to leave Vancouver, it turned out to be really fine and sunny, but of course we were leaving <laughs> and we got to Seattle. We took a bus from Vancouver to Seattle and Seattle was absolutely pouring with rain. Um, my husband knew a friend, had a friend in Seattle, so we met up with him and his family and we went to a science museum, um, very close to the needle. So that was really fun. And then we drove down to Oregon, um, went to Port Portland, um, where I went to Powell's Bookstore, which is amazing. Thank you, Kate, from Kate's Crafting Corner for recommending that. Um, it is basically a bookshop that takes up a whole block, um, three stories, and it it's huge. I could have spent days and days in there, but unfortunately we only had about an hour. But after visiting there, we went to Acorns and Threads, and I bought a couple of things from there. Um, and then we drove to Eugene, where my husband actually went to school for a couple of years. Um, his dad was on secondment for work, and that's that was his first trip over there. Um, it finally became sunny when we got to California again, and... Um, we went to Santa Barbara, which is where my husband spent his second um, time living in the US, and we met up with a friend of his from there. Um, he went to university in Santa Barbara. And then I went, um, one of the highlights for me was meeting Shelley from Shelley Key X Stitch and Sarah from Stitching Mummy. Um, that was awesome. Um, Shelley let us come to her house and um, Sarah has a daughter who is five and my daughter's three and a half so they, they're fairly close in age and they were playing while um, Shelley and Sarah and I stitched. Sarah brought a lot of her stitching and, and we had a kind of live whip parade which was awesome. Um, I showed them the four projects that I took which I'll show you as well. Um, then my husband took the kids to the park so we started stitching and we had a really good day. We had lunch after that and um, it was so much fun to meet them. They're lovely, lovely ladies. Um, just as nice as they are in their videos. They are, they are in real life. Their stitching is amazing. Um, and then um, Sarah made some cookies, which were beautiful, and they came in handy actually on the trip back. To, to after we visited them, we went, we continued further, and um, the cookies came in handy in the car because we kind of ran out of food by that time. Um, and we didn't want to stop, so, so it was good having them. And they were beautiful, Sarah. Thank you for those. Um, Shelley actually gave us, um, she picked up this bag, which has Ada, an Ada panel on it. Um, so I'll find something to stitch on there. And the Ada actually lifts up so that you can get to the back. But then I guess you can sew it down or leave it flapping. But um, So, yeah, I'm, I'll be look, on the lookout for small patterns to stitch there. But she also filled the bag with some hand dyed thread. Um, so she got two gentle arts, um, garden gate, which is a nice grey brown colour, and dark chocolate, which as you'd expect is brown, same colour as my hair. <laughs> um, and then we got some um, crescent colours, this is Tyler Boy Blue. This is wild berries. This is 
ladybug and she got this because my channel name is ladybird stitcher so that's so sweet and deep sea blue oh deep blue sea sorry um i can see this mirror image on the screen so I, i'm hoping it turns out okay um i'm using my ipad for the first time i got an ipad while i was over there because you saved like 200 dollars. so why wouldn't you um so um yeah hopefully it's turn it's showing up okay um i'll show the rest of the haul late later but these were from shelly and they're so special thank you so much shelly it was so lovely to get those um and um hopefully soon you'll see something stitched on this bag too so that's awesome um, um and then yeah after after i left shelly's house we went to hollywood um i didn't like hollywood at all i'm sorry if that offends someone but it really wasn't for me i thought it was a bit too um we stayed in the main strip of hollywood so um because we're tourists and and you know that's what you do and i just thought it was all very fake and plastic and <laughs> it just wasn't for me i'm sorry if that offends anyone i'm sure the rest of hollywood isn't like that but the parts that we saw were too fake i thought um straight after that we went to beverly hills because um i think shelly told me I, I can't remember if it was shelly or sarah but one of them mentioned that um joanne's was going to have a sale and um they had 30 uh dmc three for 99 cents um i got the famous long receipt it's not that long i only got 39 skeins but um I had to take part in that sale because that, that's unheard of in Australia. Um, I also got one of the double, um, I won't show you, what, um, but it's the double um, bobbin case. Because um, although you can get them in Australia, they're not very easy to get. Um, I got one from, I bought one once um, and it was from Amazon US. And trying to find a seller that would sell, that would ship to Australia was um took ages to find someone and then they wanted they charged quite a bit of money i think it ended up costing me about 45 dollars and i'm i'm really embarrassed that i paid that much for a box um but um joanne's had it for 50 percent off and i got it for seven dollars fifty so um i didn't care that i didn't have room in my luggage it was coming home with me and it did um so yeah that was basically the trip in a nutshell we then got I got on the um we actually left um the us on that thursday um after beverly hills we left from la um it was about 11 30 at night so um my daughter slept most of the waves we she held off sleeping i don't know how she managed to stay awake until we got on the plane and then um as soon as we took off she fell asleep so she slept most of the way and my husband slept. I slept for an hour, which is a lot for me on a plane. Um, but I spent most of the time watching movies because I was just bored because everyone else was asleep. Um, so yeah, um, we got back and we've settled in now past the jet lag. Jet lag wasn't too bad actually. Um, it's a lot worse coming back from Europe. I guess it's a much longer trip from Europe. It's actually strange going from Sydney to LA it took about 12 hours and from LA to Sydney was about 15 to 16 so I found that really strange but tailwind and things my husband assures me he knows all about it um, but yeah so enough about that um, let's get to stitching we're a quarter of an hour in I'm really sorry I, um, I'll put a, a thing at the beginning um, if you want to fast forward you can go to 15 minutes um, anyway First thing I want to show you, I had a finish, um, Emerald Mermaid by Mirabilia. Here's what she looked like the last time you saw it. And I took this with me and I worked on it for a week. Um, I actually worked on this while I was stitching with Shelley and Sarah. And... There she is now, she's finished. Um, I'm gonna take her to the framers, I think. I'm actually having car trouble, so I don't know if I'll make it to the framers, but um, hopefully next time you see this, it will be framed. But she's beautiful, there's a lot of beads. I don't know if you can see them, but 
very blingy. This was stitched on 32 count Jobelin in Summer Sky. And I found the 32 count difficult when it came to putting the beads in. Um, I think Jessie spoke about this. Um, you do have to leave some out. So where the pattern says, for example, to put five next to each other, I'd put four. Um, you know, where there's lines like this or, or even lines going down, like here, of beads, um, I often skip some because they just wouldn't fit. So, but I'm really happy with it. Um, my daughter loves it. <laughs> yeah, um, this is, I'm very happy with it. it. The stitching took me six months. I started on the 1st of November 2017 and I finished the stitching on the 1st of May 2018. Um, and I finished the beads, I think, on the 5th of May. So it took me four days to bead. So, yeah. And that was solid stitching. I, I got as much stitching in as I could. Um, and my husband was very accommodating, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, before we left, I stitched on um, two other mirabilias. First one was Villa Mirabilia. Uh, oh, hang on. Villa Mirabilia. She's now out of print, unfortunately. Um, she has been out of print for some time, but I will put in a photo of what she looked like before, uh, the last time you saw her. And here is where it is now. So I've basically only did a little bit of the greenery there, I think. And I think maybe this bit in the corner is new as well. Um, so that's basically the... It's like an urn. A massive pot um, in the corner there. So I, my goal for this year is to try and finish that. Um, and maybe get to her face as well. So... Um, but... Um, this one is, it's huge. It's on a fat half of fabric. By the way, the fabric is 28 count Opal Lugana. Yep, Opal Lugana um, in Oasis from Colour Cascade Fabrics. Um, it's beautiful fabric. It is a fat half, so it's really large. Um, and I had put the Velcro to stitch it on my stand, um, the easy stitch stand. Unfortunately, it has broken to the point where I can't fix it anymore. Um, I have mentioned in the past that it wasn't holding its um, it wasn't holding its its height, so you're able to adjust the height so that you can stitch comfortably. Um, and what it was was a pin was sticking out at the back. Um, I spoke to the company; they'd never seen it before. They'd never seen that happen before. Um, my husband was able to fix it and then it kept happening and he was still able to fix it um, so he tried to fix it over and over again um, and then finally he'd pulled it apart and I, I thought I'm never going to be able to use this again um, he put it back together he got it to the point where it worked he said I'll just tighten it a little bit more and it flopped and um, Basically, you can't stitch on it anymore because it just completely flops. It won't go anywhere. Um, so, yeah, that's ruined. I've ordered the Lowry stand and that's on its way. Um, sorry about the leaning. Um, so I'm looking forward to receiving that because that'll, make, that'll mean that I can start using the big frame again. The frames are still fine. Um, it's just the stand is no longer usable, unfortunately. Um... I also worked on Autumn Queen. This is also now out of print. Um, I'm stitching this as a cell with Belinda from Aussie Stitcher. Hi, Belinda. Um, we decided to start all of the f all the four queens: um, Summer Queen, Winter Summer Queens, Autumn Queen, Winter Queen, and Spring Queen on the first day of the seasons um, in Australia. So it's currently autumn. 
and I'm working on Autumn Queen and I'm stitching this on Rocket Queen on 28 count Lugana from Colour Cascade Fabrics. So here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And here is what, where she is now. I actually worked on this for a few days before we left and I've been working on it ever since I finished Emerald Mermaid. My mania this year is um, Mirabilia mania, mostly Mirabilia mania. Um, I didn't want to start anything new because I have started quite a few this year and I still plan to start more. I didn't want to add to my whips just for the sake of mania. Um, so I decided to make it, I was just going to focus on Emerald Mermaid but obviously when that finished I thought I'll just make it a Mirabilia mania. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in my plans but um, I've been working on her since about the 5th so it's now the night so I've had a good three or four days on it, four days on it, and I'm really enjoying her. Um, she calls for a lot of, so this this section here, um, that's all whisper white, or the white section is whisper white, and I actually don't have any, I've ordered some from 123 Stitch, so I'm waiting for that to come in, um, but I've, her face is finished. Um, I've also put in the back stitch for most of the face. Um, I haven't put any put in any of the chronic because I only got got that um, in the last couple of days, and um, I've just been focusing on the DMC. But yeah, I, I'm really enjoying working on her. So that's that one. And then I took four projects with me on my trip. Um, I worked on these, we were there for a month, so I worked on these um, for a week each. And the first one I worked on was, sorry I've just got needle minders sticking to each other. first one I worked on was Guardians of Notre Dame and here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. So here's what it, where it is now. So I finished... Oh, well, I did most as much of the border as I could. I think we left on yeah we left on the twenty sixth or twenty seventh of March, whatever the Tuesday was, um, and because we got there on that same day, I worked on this um, on the border mainly, and I worked on it until the April um, the April Chimera came out, and I'm holding this the wrong way. Sorry, but it actually goes like that. So. January, February, March, April. So when the April one came out, I stitched that. Um, so I'm really enjoying this one. I haven't started on May yet, but I will do that after May year. And I don't know when I'm going to finish the border, but I've got enough in that I can kind of continue for a couple of months without needing to worry about it. So I'm happy with that. So I spent a week on this. Um, and then when the week finished, I put it down but I did manage to finish the camera on that one and I'm just stitching this on a tan doble one that I found on eBay a 28 count it's a mystery cell so I can't show you what the finished one will look like um, when that one finished I picked up Prairie Schooler Alphabet again which is um, I'm doing D E and F so the last time you saw me I was working on D and here's what it looked like then. Um, I finished D before we left and I finished E while we were on the trip. I did hope to get to F but it just didn't happen. Um, so here it is now. So as you can see with D, I D was the American flag on there, and this is this is a reverse American flag. So it's not the actual American flag, but you can it's very obvious what it's what it's trying to be. Um, but I left that off. I put music 
music notes um, in that panel there and I left the drum, the inside of the drum empty and I just made that red. Um, got the bald eagle at the bottom and that's kind of a reminder to me that I was um, preparing for a trip to the US while I was stitching on that panel. So that was that was kind of um, symbolic for me as well. And then um, E is E is for embroidery and I stitched that while I were, while we were on the trip. So um, I did hope to finish F but it didn't happen but I'll probably get to that um, straight after I start on Guardian straight after I did the camera on Guardians of Notre Dame. I will do the F, which is F is for friend. That one. Um, so hopefully you'll see it next next time. So that's that. Then I worked on my stocking, um, stocking faithful friends, and here's what it will look like when it's finished. And here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And here it is now. So I managed three columns of page five. So that's page one, page two. Page three is blank on this one because it's a stocking. Page four I finished last month, I think, or the month before. And this is page five. Um, and that's... I think three columns of page five. So I've got Santa's face in now. I want to finish, I can't remember if there's two columns or three remaining. I think it's three, but I'd like to finish that uh, this month. So I think I might be planning a little bit too much for this month, <laughs> um, but we will see. So that's all the whips I had. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about my plans um, now. So, oh, um, I wanted to thank everyone for their advice on this one. Um, I, I, like I mentioned, I'm not American. Um, the, I couldn't work out what the drum and the American flag um, how they were related, but quite a few of you mentioned that it was um, the marching during the American Revolutionary War. Um, so now I know, so thank you very much for that. Um, I decided not to put in the American flags because um, I'm not American and just having it on my stitching doesn't mean anything to me. I'm sorry about that, but um, the American Revolutionary War, I'm sure, is um, very important to every American, but to me it just doesn't have any meaning to me at all so I've left the bald eagle because um, like I've mentioned I'm not artistic enough to change it but also it's a nice kind of reminder that I was preparing for my trip to America while um, I was stitching it um, and that's why I, I put the um, musical notes there rather than the American flag so thank you to everyone who commented on that um, now my plans um, so I'm, I'm stitching on Mirabilia Mania. If my frame arrives um, by the 15th, I will switch to Villa Mirabilia and put some work on her. Um, I'm thinking it may not um, because it's coming from the from so-and-so in the UK. Um, I, I ordered it while I was still overseas, so that was about two weeks ago. Um, and I have heard that some people have received it within nine business days, which is two weeks, but um, I'm, prob I'm leaving it for at least three. I'm, I'm, I won't follow it up until at least three weeks from when I ordered it. Um, so if it doesn't come, I will continue to work on Autumn Queen. Um, I can't, I've tried working on Villa Mirabilia in a Q-snap and there's just too much fabric. Um, I just have trouble manoeuvring it. So. Um, I think I'll just stick to Autumn Queen until my my stand arrives. Once, um, so that's my mostly Mirabilia, mostly Mirabilia Mania. 
Um, that will go until the 15th of May. In the meantime, excuse me, in the meantime, um, Cross Stitch Finish Line, which is a Facebook group I will link below, have a stitches on this weekend um, where you stitch 500 stitches and you get entered into a draw at the end of the year for every 500 stitches that you complete. Um, I will either stitch on Secret Door um, by Hade or Faithful Friends by Hade. Um, I um, usually use Hades or Tilt and Craft pieces or full coverage pieces to work on stitch-a-thons only because I can count the stitches really easily. Um, I'm hoping to finish Faithful Friends page 5 so I guess the smart thing to do would be to work on stocking on the stocking but I also miss Secret Doll so I don't know. Um, but once that's finished I think it goes over until the 13th of May which is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mums um, who celebrate during May. Um, so yeah I'll, I'll probably work on the stocking um, next, this weekend. Finishes on the 13th so that leaves two extra days of mania and I'll go back to my Queen or um, Villa Mirabilia for the last two days of mania. Once mania is finished I'll pick up Guardians of Notre Dame and put in the May Chimera um, I'll also work on the Prairie Schooler alphabet and try to get F finished and I'll try to complete page 5 of Faithful Friends. I'm pretty sure that will take me to the end of the month because that will only leave 16 days so um, I'm pretty sure that will cover the month. So they're my plans. Um, now for haul. I got um, quite a lot um, because it's like a month and a half since I, was, since I saw you last. So when I got home, I had a few pieces of fabric waiting for me. Um, this is the January fabric of the month from Colour Cascade Fabrics. It is a 28 count Monaco um, and this is called After the Rain. It's a really nice piece of blue and grey fabric with a bit slight purple in it as well. It's really, really pretty. Um, that was actually sent to me earlier and it had gone missing in the mail. I, the original piece still hasn't turned up, but Tammy was nice enough to re-dye it. So that's my January fabric of the month. I'm actually still waiting on February and March fabric of the month, which I'm really not happy about given that we're in the middle of May. Um, Tammy has been falling behind and... I know she's doing her best to catch up, but as a customer, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm a bit um, annoyed about that. I still have some credit with her. Um, during April, she didn't send invoices for people with 28 Count Lugana because she didn't have any of that fabric, so she thought she'd catch up that way. Um, but I've paid my May Fabric of the Month invoice um, because part of it was a credit that I had with her. Um, but I think I'm going to stop it after that because it's just... Um, too long a wait. I've had, I've had to follow up every single fabric of the month ever since I started it in June, I believe, last year, or July last year. Um, I started on Monaco, and she told me that um, the Monaco is always delayed because it doesn't take the dye as well as Lugana. So I switched to Lugana, um, and that's just been delayed every month as well. So I'm not happy about that. Um, that's just my experience. Um, I did have an order with her, which I placed on the 1st of February. Um, this was in the middle of a sale, so it took longer because she was catching up on the sale. So I don't mind that at all. But this is um, Opal Lugana, 28 count of Opal Lugana. Yep. Um, this is only a fat eighth, but it's in Gold Digger, um, which I am planning to stitch afternoon in Rome by Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, I still have to do a floss toss on that. So, um, but I've stitched afternoon in Paris and afternoon in London. So um, I want to continue that series with afternoon in Rome. And then the other the other piece I got in the sale is Silver Springs. And this is a fat quarter. Um, in Opal Lugana, 28 can Opal Lugana in Silver Springs. 
that's not really showing up. Um, it's a grey. It's a very neutral grey colour. Um, beautiful piece of fabric. I've got nothing against Tammy's fabrics. They are beautiful. Um, but I don't like waiting. And I don't know. When you pay for something in February and in the middle of May there's still no sign of it, it gets a little bit worrying. I'm just starting to lose track of what I've ordered um, and what I've paid for and what I've received. And it, it's not really my job to follow up. It should, shouldn't be a customer's job to follow up. Um, I think I think I'm being reasonable there. I'm, um, but yeah, hopefully I'll receive them soon. Um, what else? Um, when I was at Stitches Paradise, I bought this one. This is I, I've seen this. I think it was um, Yellow House Crafts. Nell, Nell from Yellow House Crafts was working on this. I think, I hope I'm right there. Um, but I love this one. Um, it's called Eggs All Around. It uses, um, it gives you the, the colours for Sullivan's, Anchor and Sullivan's, Sullivan's there, <laughs> Anchor and DMC. Um, there's also Chronic and Mill Hill beads in it. Um, you can see there. So there's quite a lot. Um, to kit up there. I've got most of the DMC colours, so that's not a problem. It's just getting all the chronic and Millhill beads. Oh, and there's one gentle art skein. A skein. Um, oh, it needs four skeins of spring grass. So, yeah, it'll probably be a while before I kit this up, but it'll be really nice to have this going um, for Easter next year. It won't be done by then, but. Um, It'll be really nice to have it going by then. I'll start it then. So yeah, that's really pretty. And like I said, I also got a couple of um, Krynics, which are already with the charts that I bought them for. Um, when I went to Acorns and Threads, I found um, Spirit of Christmas Mystery Sampler by Lizzie Kate. Um, so I got the chart one chart two and that's that's what it will look like when it's finished i think they had the embellishment pack there but i didn't think to get it um but i've since ordered it since i got back so one two three stitch still had it um i don't know whether lizzie kate is going to reprint their patterns if you know please let me know down below um i've stitched a couple of lizzie kates in the past they're not a huge they're not something i'd normally look for but I do like some of the patterns that, that they have. Um, and when I saw this, I, I've seen people stitch this one up and I really like this one. So I didn't want it to go out of print and to miss out um, because a couple of the Prairie Schooler ones have gone out of print and um, I really wish I'd, I'd gotten them before they they did because they haven't reprinted them yet. Um, so yeah, I'm waiting for the embellishment pack and the um, special big threads to come in um, I only ordered them yesterday though, so um, so I got that from Acorns and Threads. Um, before I went away, I asked, um, I ordered, placed an order for Lizzie Kate with JK's cross stitching supplies here in Australia. Um, she's on Facebook and she only ships within Australia and I think New Zealand. Um, she is excellent, so um, if you are in Australia or New Zealand, please check her out. I will link the Facebook group below. Um, but she had this one. It's called um, Wouldn't Life Be Great. Now, there's a lady, as a floss tuber that I watch, who is in the um, in England that has, has that has already stitched this. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. I think it's Sarah, but I can't remember the channel name. Um, I'm really sorry about that. I will try to put it um, somewhere on the screen. But she stitched this and I really like it. It says, wouldn't life be great if sweatpants were sexy, Mondays were fun, junk food was good for you, girls didn't cause so much drama, guys weren't so confusing, and saying goodbye only meant until tomorrow. Um, that is a very American, um, we don't say sweatpants here, we say tracksuit pants. Um, I'm not going to change it though because tracksuit would never fit in that little <laughs> section there. Um, but yeah, I really like that saying, that... Um, phrase so I got that 
Then um, Robin was placing an order. My friend Robin, um, she's not on FOSTube, but hi Robin. Um, she was placing an order with 123 Stitch and I asked her for a couple of things. Um, we often do that, we share the postage. So um, now Dana from, um, I will put her channel name here, but she has been working on this one. And this one is called Flowers of the Holy Night and I absolutely love it. Um, this one calls for a couple of dink, um, not a couple, it's nine dinky dyes, skeins, and I'm actually thinking, oh, I've just realised, <laughs> although there's nine different colours, the number of skeins it needs is quite a lot more than one each, so it may get a little bit expensive as well, but... I don't know, I'm, I really like, I don't, I can't remember whether Dana's stitching this using the cord for dinky dies or if she's just switched to DMC. Um, either way, it's, um, it's beautiful. I think it'll be beautiful in DMC anyway, so I might just use DMC. Uh, it also calls for Mill Hills. Um, I don't know why they've got... We've got a section of Mill Hills there and then another section there, so I'll look into that a bit more. Oh, they're the, they're the treasures at the bottom. Yeah, so this one's going to be quite expensive to kit up as well, but it'll happen one day and I'm, I'm just happy to have it. It's a beautiful piece. I love poinsettias. Um, I had a poinsettia. They don't, they don't do very well in Australia because... Um, well, they're a Christmas flower and obviously our Christmas is in summer. So we don't actually get flowering. You can buy flowering ones, but they don't normally flower in summer. They flower in winter. And um, I bought one the first for the first Christmas we were in this house and it was going really well. And then um, I got, came back from holidays and it's, it died, unfortunately. Um, I also got this from 123 Stitch. It's a Lanart kit. And it's called Girl with a Pearl. I also saw it listed as Delft Girl. Yeah, there's Delft Girl there, but on the back it's called Girl with a Pearl. There. Um, so it's it's only small. It's in Ada, um, and the pattern is is quite clear and large. Um, here are the threads. Uh, you get a needle. And it looks like a 16 count or 18 count Ada, white Ada. Um, it's quite stiff, but not as stiff as some of the dimensions ones you get. Lanart tends to put better quality fabric in their kits. Um, some of them even have even weave. So um, I'll, I won't be replacing that fabric. I'll be working on that one. But it came in this nifty little box um, wrapped in orange tissue paper. So um, I have been wanting to do a Delft piece for a while. I actually visited Delft when we were in the Netherlands um, two years ago. And uh, you may know that the original painter of the Girl with a Pearl earring was Vermeer and he was actually, I think he was born in, in Delft or lived in Delft. Um, but um, I was lucky enough to go to the Delft um, display centre and they've got beautiful pieces there. But yeah, I, um, I was considering st starting this for Mania as well but I decided not to. Just got too many on the go now. Um, but I don't know how much longer I can wait. <laughs> um, I think that's it for stitching. Um, I've been going for 50 minutes. Um, I'm going to go on to books, um, but if you're not interested in books, please um, feel free to skip ahead to to the next video. Um, I'm actually really behind on my floss tube. Um, I've decided to just draw a line and skip any between now and the start of Mania. Um, most of them are planning videos, um, which I normally like, but given that I'm actually that there's actually now videos of actual mania I may as well just watch the actual mania videos um, if there's a video that you really want me to see please let me know but I think now I'm just going to skip ahead and um, 
just start from May. Um, I don't watch everyone anymore. I used to watch everyone, um, but it's just impossible now. So I'll only watch my favourites. I'm sorry about that, but I only have a limited number of t a limited amount of time to watch videos. Um, I don't watch the Stitch with Me videos because there just isn't time. I would like to, but um, you have to divide your time the best way you can. So, unfortunately, um, yeah, I do skip quite a lot of videos these days. Okay, books. Um, I was reading Longbourn by Joe Baker. I don't have any of these books because they were all on my Kindle, um, but I will list them below. Um, so Longbourn by Joe Baker, that was basically Pride and Prejudice um, from the point of view of the servants. Um, I found it, find it, found it a page turner and really interesting and I enjoyed that. Um, probably give it a 3 out of 5. Um, I also read Forever is the Worst Long Time by Camille, Camille Pagan. Um, again, I'll list this below and I really enjoyed that one as well. It's basically... Um, a man who writes to his daughter. Um, he um, has a really good friend. He goes out to visit him and his friend's about to get married. Um, this all happens within the first chapter, so I'm not giving anything away. Um, but he um, he's a struggling writer. He gets to this friend's house um, to meet the fiancé and he falls in love with the fiancé. Um, the fiancé and his best friend, well, <laughs> they get married. Um, sorry, I haven't phrased that in the best possible way, but you know what I mean. They, they end up getting married, um, and he carries a flame for this woman um, for quite some time. Um, but he has written, he ends up, you can tell from the first, first chapter as well, that he does end up having a child with this woman, um, and I won't go into the details of how that happens. Um, and how she leaves the husband and, and that kind of thing. But um, you can read about that if you're interested. Um, but he writes a letter to his daughter um, for when she's older. So he's writing it while she's a baby. Um, and it was it was really good. And it's called Forever is the Worst Long Time by Camille Pagan. I'll probably give that a four out of five. I then re read Whiskey and Ribbons by Lisa Cross Smith. Um, that was really good as well. Um, it is about a policeman, a police officer who dies. Um, and the book goes backwards and forwards from um, the point of view of his wife, his brother and, um, his, and him. So it goes backwards and forwards in time. Um, still very easy to keep up with. Sometimes novels like that you kind of get lost a little bit but but I found it really easy to keep up with what was happening um, what ba basically what happens and this is all again in the first chapter I'm not giving anything away um, but his wife um, is, is nine months pregnant when he dies and she is left with obviously she's about to have this baby um, the man's brother, the cop, the cop's brother who died, um, moves in with her to help with the baby, and they end up falling in love. Um, so yeah, that's that's all. That all happens early on. So I'm not giving anything away. I'm currently reading Victoria 430 by Cecil Roberts, and it is about Victoria Station in um, London, and the different people who. Um, who are going who are passing through there at 4 30 in the afternoon on this particular day um it follows a porter so someone who's helping with all the bags it also follows the people who are in first class um and all the different circumstances i am finding that it's it's a kind of these people aren't really related in any way and it's more of a short stories book so i'm not sure if i'm going to continue with it because I don't really like short stories much. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll see. I might finish it, but I'm, I haven't picked it up since we got back from the holiday, so I'm thinking I probably won't, because we've been back for almost two weeks now. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Um, this is probably my longest video ever, so um, 
if you've stuck around, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm hoping to be back in the next couple of weeks. Um, thank you so much for subscribing, commenting, and I will see you soon. Bye, everyone.